What's going on everyone? My name is Jake and I am a contract audio engineer and sound enthusiast. I know there are a lot of people out there looking to learn the art of music production and sound engineering through online resources. And I'm sure you know that there is so much to learn. Because of this, one of the most basic concepts of sound engineering and music production is often overlooked. These concepts have to do with what sound actually is, how it works, and how we as humans perceive it. So I wanted to create these quick explanation videos to give you that information in a very timely manner so that you can later apply and better understand what you are actually doing when recording, mixing, and mastering. So let's waste no more time and get right into the video. Frequency is perceived as pitch and amplitude as loudness, but there is one more concept that you are probably familiar with, which is phase shift. And this concept has to do with time. Phase has to do with the time relationship between two or more sound waves. Based off what we know about the waveforms actually being a representation of compression and rarefaction, you might be able to understand that if these two out of phase waveforms interact with each other, the intensity of these cycles will change. If at a given point, one sound wave is in its compression cycle and the other is rarefacting, the summation of these parts of the cycle will be diminished. On the other hand, if they were to be completely in phase, meaning that they were both compressing and rarefacting at the same time, the intensity will be increased. Phase shift is a huge deal in audio recording. It becomes almost more of a practice than just a concept. Let me show you this application. Obviously, when you record an instrument, you use a microphone to pick up the sound wave emanating from the instrument. Now, it is a very common practice to use more than one microphone on an instrument, as to capture more perspective and achieve a more detailed sound from that instrument. A large problem occurs when the two microphones are not spaced equally from the instrument. The issue is that when these sound waves emanate from the instrument, they will reach the microphones at different times and at different parts of the compression and rarefaction cycle, and thus creating some level of phase shift between the recorded signal from the two microphones. This is why it is important to place microphones equidistant from the sound source. All right, so if we take a look at these top two tracks here, we'll see we have two in phase sine waves. Now, what I wanna show you is how one sine wave that is in phase with another kind of affects the amplitude of both of them. So what I'm going to start by doing is by playing you this first sine wave that I have highlighted right now and I'm going to add the second one in and hopefully you'll hear the amplitude change. Now I'm going to add the second one in, taking it out, back in. So you can hear that when I add another in-phase sine wave, the amplitude increases. Now, what happens when we drag this out of phase? So this is you know, somewhat close to 180 degrees out of phase, just so that the peak of this equals up to the valley of this sine wave. Now let's listen to what they do. Once again, I'm going to start by only playing this highlighted sine wave. And I'm going to add the second one in. back out and back in. Now, it's not completely 180 degrees out of phase because you can still hear a little bit, but with sine waves, when they're completely out of phase, they will almost completely cancel out and you can hear how much of a decrease in amplitude is present in these two sine waves once I drag the second one out of phase. Now, let's see what happens when we do this with a real instrument. I'm gonna, I have t a recording of a A chord here few strums of an A chord from a guitar. And right now they are completely in phase. As you will see, they are the exact same chord. All I did was I took this one and I copied and pasted it to another track. So they should be the exact same throughout and it should have the exact same waveform. Now, I'm going to play you just this top one at first, just like I did with the sine wave, and just so we get a general idea of what it sounds like. Now I'm going to add the second one in. So as you can see, once again, that there is a dramatic increase in amplitude when there are two in-phase sound waves of the same exact type. 
Now, let's see what happens to this guitar when I try to drag it out of phase. Now, something to note is I'm not going to be able to get it quite as out of phase as I did with the sine wave just due to how inconsistent the waveform is. However, you will still notice a dramatic difference from the in phase and out of phase versions. So once again, I'm just going to play this top one here that I'm highlighting right now. So we get a general idea of what just one sounds like. Now let's add the second out of phase A chord. So hopefully you can see that not only the amplitude has changed, but the clarity of the A chord has also diminished quite a bit. And this is why it's so important to practice phase alignment while you're recording a specific instrument with more than one microphone. So this is the final episode in the quick explanation series. We've covered how sound is created, frequency, amplitude, and finally phase shift. If you have missed any of these episodes, I will post links in the description below. Thanks for tuning in.